Episode one is one of my favorites. Episode one, the video, the vid, not the video, the episode that starts the whole story. Yep, that it's a fun one. It was fun. It was itchy. It was itchy. The woods is itchy. The woods was the worst experience of my life. Was it? I am going to be saying that many times throughout this. This, this was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> episode one. Okay, episode one. Episode one. I can't remember back that far. <laughs> Five days before Benny pointed the gun at the tall douche, he was in a horde. Well, there was a horde, and his girlfriend got separated, and so now he's, uh, he's crazy. He's crazy. He's a little bit nuts at the moment, and so he sees the Matthew and Wilbur, and so he's like, Krah! and he's like, I don't cool that temper. Cool that vengeful temper. And he was like, all right, all right. He, he was like, I can use these guys to help me find my love. I have one question that was in my head. Did Wilbur meet Eric? Well, judging by Wilbur's line of some of us weren't in there for more than a day, I would say maybe he saw Eric. I wouldn't say that he actually got the time to, like, talk, because they had to do the whole meet and greet, oh, my name is Matthew, my name is Wilbur, so I would say Eric. I wouldn't say he met Eric. Um, it was a lot of fun. I ripped a man's hand off. He did. On accident, because he was eated. Um, not sure if that was Eric or Todd. I named the other one. <laughs> uh, in canon. In when Snapdragons bite canon. Matthew, Todd, and Eric all show up at the camp about day, day and a half before people start dying. Eric was bit. That was what happened in the camp. But here's one thing I noticed. Wilbur runs back to the camp after a gunshot. Who fired the gun? <laughs> you did. I did? I had a gun? Your rifle. I mean, it was over there, though. He threw it and tried to grab the hand. Yeah. It's just, it is. There's something about it that's special. Mm -hmm. It's... I don't even know what it is. It's the shortest. It has the least amount of character development. It has... Arguably the best setting. Where it's you're all over the woods. Yeah. It's it's you're boom 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 boom. George, you kill a zombie. We actually have zombies instead of like the movie when it's all me. <laughs> so we're using that wheelchair, of course, which was utter shit. And then we're like, hey, let's go out in the woods where it'll be even harder to move. <laughs> so you basically wedged me in the dirt and then said, stay here. I had nowhere to go, and I'm just like, guys, hi. In the end, I was playing with a piece of rope I found in the dirt. <laughs> Nothing else to do, like, I guess we'll do this now. How well does Matthew know Wilbur, and does he trust him? I think Matthew is an inherently trusting person. I've noticed. Matthew um, has, a, has a habit of ignoring someone's flaws, <laughs> and maybe... He tries way too hard to see the good in everyone. Mm -hmm. I feel like up until Mark died, he was willing to like even bargain with Drake and mm -hmm. be like, "Listen, we can we can talk ourselves out of this. It's not a big problem. It's all a big misunderstanding. Can we be friends?" Mm -hmm. And uh, but then he, he he went bang, and he was like, "Maybe not. Now I'm gonna become edgy for five episodes." <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to amp up. I try to I try to go from soft boy to soft boy who thinks he's tough to dead boy. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I made that progression. Matthew definitely had the most interesting and well-fleshed-out arc of anyone in the show. Yeah. Definitely. Where Benny started as searching for his significant other to group member gone missing to punchy, punchy, fighty, kicky. And then he was dead. Wilbur was just kind of... I'm going to keep everyone together. I'm going to talk loudly so everyone does what I say. <laughs> <laughs> it's true! <laughs> Uh, Matthew, I think, trusted Wilbur wholeheartedly. I think him... I think 
the less responsibility he had to take, the better. Mm-hmm. Simply because he's a nervous, antsy guy, and uh, he'd crack under that pressure. I think if we had, if we could expand the show over a few years, mm-hmm. I feel like he could almost have a like not a Glenn arc, but um, become more of a responsible character who can take on responsibilities of the group and like if this was like a bigger budget we could hire many people stuff kind of thing yeah i think that'd be really cool I, but that's the dream but uh the the dream is to make a multi-season zombie yeah. show and we could even do that with D D. since you weren't around the first three episodes we're gonna say you were alive in the first three episodes what what was drake doing like when, when like uh, Benny and Wilbur and Matthew and Mark first met, was he? Did he? Was he coming back from killing uh, Dizzy's dad? I'm glad you asked. In episode one, okay, here's the timeline. Because if you if you watch the episodes through, between episode one and. Episode one and when Wilbur sleeps in three is only maybe four hours. Well, no. It's like seven, episodes right? one and two is a day. Let me clear this up because I've already made it worse, not better. Okay. <laughs> what Drake is doing? Daisy's already left by the time you see Wilbur come out of those bushes. Daisy is left, and Drake's been hunting her for probably under a week, more than three days. How fun the tent was to set up. Oh god, that was funny. Uh, I didn't help at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going around making jokes about this metal thing, pretending to be a robot. That was pretty great. Uh, <laughs> I'm the most useless person. No. <laughs> oh my god. I just watched everyone do it. Oh, that's funny. The tent took, what, about a half hour to put up? I helped some. You did. Uh, it did. They're not good with tents. Um... <laughs> Dimitri saved me. It was mainly Dimitri and George putting the tent up. Yeah. Well, it was nice to see you try. It was Th- cute. Thanks. <laughs> so Daisy was introduced when? Episode 2, right? Episode 2. Yes. Episode 2. What was going through her mind when she heard people downstairs in the house she was living in? What did she think was going on with the situation she was in? Did she think it was Drake? I would think so, because she, you know, she just left. Her father just died, so she's obviously paranoid. So I'm assuming that when she heard, she thought, oh, this is great Drake's people, or this is Drake messing with her. So immediately she was on the defense instead of being like, yeah, group. Let's, let's, yeah. Like, like uh, Matt, Dimitri's character, who was like, yeah, yeah, group. The cinnamon roll. Yeah, the cinnamon roll. Yeah. <laughs> Episode two, the the seeing the group form and act as a as a um as a group actually. Uh, that was fun. Uh, getting screen time with Zach for more than two seconds. I actually hold a gun next to Zach, um, at least for a moment, uh, instead of dropping it. This is the first time I see him. Yeah. Okay, in episode two. He's basically just saying what the hell's going on. When everyone was meeting and greeting and talking to everyone each other, everyone did and stuff. the whole. Oh, hey, my name is. <laughs> did Wilbur dislike anybody? I would say he didn't even get a read on personalities, yet, <laughs> so I can't say he would dislike anyone. If anyone, I would say Mark or Benny, mm-hmm. just because Benny rolled up with a revolver. <laughs> Rick style. So any threat to life is kind of like you're not gonna bake cookies for him. Episode two is pretty much a shame. We were in the woods, we we're doing shit, and I'm in that shitty chair. <laughs> well, we didn't get indoors for the end of episode two. Yeah, and again, we couldn't get me through the threshold. <laughs> so basically, your experience with the show chalks up to the in woods, dirt bad, chair bad, chair suck. Yep, sounds yeah. about right to me. Well, I did like being able to mess with my lines a bit. I had fun with that. Yeah, you changed pretty much every line. I had for some really good ones, though. You have to admit, it worked out. Yeah, it did. It did. 
I still wish that one had made the cut and made me change. But, Which one? Uh, when Zach ran up the first time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason we changed it is because the camera stopped recording halfway through it. It's like one more step and we find your dick three counties over. Everyone else is just like, a little much? <laughs> uh, episode two. Obviously, he hasn't found Daisy yet. Still on the madman hunt? Still on the madman hunt. Um, here's the thing about episode two. Two and three both. They were the slow, boring ones that would completely ruin the story if they weren't there. Yeah. Where, without the character development that was in uh, 2 and 3, you wouldn't have the rest of the show. Let's see. It's not that they're boring, it's that they're the least fun. Mm -hmm. It was just talking, it, it wasn't... There was a lot of... But now, not movie bad. It was not like the movie. Now, episode 2... I remember you were doing something else for the majority of the wood shoot. But when we got back to the house, you took over the camera work. Yes. What was that like? What was episode two like for you? Which one's that? The one where <laughs> they find Kaylee's place and enter. Oh, at your parents' house? Yeah. Um, that one, like, took forever. Yeah. So, it was a lot of fun not really doing anything. So, remember, did we get McDonald's? That was for four. Oh, I get these confused. Um, did we eat? Nah, uh, afterwards, I think. I'm trying to, it's associative memories. I'm trying to piece together. Now, in episode three, when everyone was discussing what to do, what, what did Daisy want to come out of it? What was, like, her, like, when, when... When Matthew said, you can, you know, you can be with us, we can be a group, we have to work together to survive, what was, when she agreed to that, what did, what did she have in mind? I think she was, I don't think she wanted to be in the group, I think she just said that so they would leave. Because she's more independent, and she didn't, she just wanted to stay away from Denny, she didn't want to go back. I don't think she fully trusted them until the very end, and when they died... But at the same time, I don't think she was too upset about it. She was just kind of like, oh, okay. Bummer. Yeah, like, that that sucks for you guys. Wow. I, I, I need to go. <laughs> like, like, cause she does say, well, just because I'm in your group doesn't mean that your problems are mine or whatever. Right, she was so still I think separating she, herself yeah. from everyone at so this I don't, point. So, because I think she, like, she got attached like, because, you know, she was close with her father, I would assume. She was emotionally detached at the moment. Yeah, so she was more distant and grief, angry. Yeah. I have a question. Because if you're just cutting out the questions, I have a question for you. What? Who did she bond with the most out of everybody there? I think uh, George's character. What was Matthew thinking when he goes into the room and he sees conflict? Help. <laughs> I'm suffering. <laughs> Help me, mommy. Um... <laughs> And again, he's a very person-oriented survivor. Mm -hmm. um, he's less about the whole rough and tumble. He's much more of a guys can we hug it out kind of person, which is the, which is great, which is good. He's like the only one out of everyone. Luna probably was the strong closest thing to that on the other side. Yeah. Um. So. In another life, if Drake wasn't as much of a psychopath. I think that they could have reached an agreement. Probably right. Through everything. Um, but he has to be the big macho man that doesn't like people helping people. Yep. Very, very self-oriented, awful yes. person who just deserved everything he got. I can't disagree. So. I um, can't. Okay. Episode what was What was going through Benny's mind when Daisy pointed the gun at Mark? Okay, the... Okay, she was like, all right. What a bitch. Um, she's right there. I know. Um, he was kind of all like, um, you know, uh, okay, these guys totally took me in, totally shouldn't have, because they just met me, but they were really cool about it, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to defend some people, so if I got to kill her, I don't really care, because I'm really mad at the moment. 
All right, during episode three, when, when they were discussing what to do with Daisy, what was what was Benny's exact thoughts? What did Benny want out of the situation? Where, did, where did he want it to go? He was like, okay, so because he's so pissed off about his thing, his, his girlfriend getting lost, he was like, all right, his assholes doing asshole things. I made the plan, so I, you know, that's an even more reason for me to go out and do it. What was going through Wilbur's mind when he saw Daisy pointing a gun at Mark? Good question. Wilbur was probably thinking, aim for the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Daisy uh, aim for Mark's heart? Because that's fine. No, Wilbur, Wilbur aim for Daisy. Da Daisy already had like the whole brain thing, so no preparation needed. Yeah, gotcha. Now, Wilbur seemed very open to letting Daisy in in episode three. Why is that? Well, yeah, you started on the wrong foot, but up to that point, they knew, the group knew as much about Daisy as Wilbur and everyone in the group knew about each other. Mm -hmm. Like, they know names. I don't even think they got to basic interests. Like, maybe Matthew really likes pottery. We I, never knew. I can see Matthew loving pottery. <laughs> Just well, anything that... It's ghost. Yeah. <laughs> ghost pottery, Matthew. <laughs> I would love that so much. <laughs> we need a spinoff. We're gonna make like 40 spinoffs at this rate. That is totally fine with me. What exactly did Wilbur think when he gave over his shotgun? If I don't get that thing <laughs> back by tomorrow, I'm killing you with it. <laughs> no. Um, I would assume it's like giving over any of your like really cherished possessions, just like, be safe, but don't like feel. Don't have to put this in under like 18 layers of security. Mm -hmm. So it's more just like take care of this, but please be safe. Yes. Like like use it if you have to, but don't break it. Gotcha. Because if you break it, I break you, Benny. Benny wasn't on set that day. Benny wasn't on set that day. We had to do the whole episode without him, and he was added later. Yes, he was. Magic. It's always fun. What was Mark's whole mindset when they were speaking about what to do with Daisy? Apocalypse, you really can't trust people. Like, hey, time to make friends. Hmm. I mean, maybe they carry a gun, but friendly. No, like, you can't. When you're meant to be a survivalist character, you're not going to go around, like, hugging people. Go like, I know you might want to kill me, but that's okay. It's what's inside that counts. <laughs> like, you, you just can't do that. And so he was very... He was the voice of reason as to can she be trusted, I think. Episode three. Episode three was fun. Um, it was... Benny... Benny takes off... With the shotgun. With the shotgun that... Wilbur gives his shotgun up in episode three and doesn't get it back until the second half of the finale. So it's more of like a... It's, is it even Wilbur's? Actually, in real life, it's mine, and the show took two, two and a half, three months to film, so I was pissed I didn't have my shotgun for that long. Well, I gave it back to you today. Yeah, I know. I finally, I finally reunited with my shotgun. When he hands me the shotgun. George hands you... Here's the, the great thing about episode three, is Zach wasn't there for any of it. I was at work. Zach was at work. Zach was not there for... And, and if Now that I'm saying it, you might be able to notice, but Zach is not seen on screen with anyone, except... George handing off the shotgun, uh, which George handed it to me, and then I handed it to Zach. And what we got that what like a week later almost. It was a week freaking later, and I just I just loved that we were able to, to make do it, that to make it flow. Yeah, because then I didn't tell because uh, I was showing this to a bunch of people, and um, with with Zach not being there, and we didn't get his shots for like a week. It kills me when an episode's half done. Yeah. Oh, and while you're watching episode three, just know that the fight scene that kills Benny was already filmed. Mm -hmm. We filmed the fight scene in between episodes two and three, I believe. Episodes one and two. One and two, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, because I remember because we couldn't line up the schedules. It was like it was it was 
Remember, mm. remember, it was that drought that was like a yeah. month long, and so we're like, Sammy, get your get your fugly ass over here. We're just gonna film the fight and just get that out of the way. Do something. I had gotten a haircut the day before to make my hair match. It was the worst idea I've ever had, but my hair ended up staying consistent. I got double the amount of haircuts I'm used to to make it happen. Episode three. I was watching anime. <laughs> you were watching anime. <laughs> now, but you also did a lot of the camera work for like uh, when Dimitri and George were convincing Kayla to stay in the group. Oh yes, I did. I liked the angles I used. Yeah, I also like those and very much. It's not just me. It's like a collaboration, mostly me and Dimitri. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Because Dimitri took the film class, and that's cool. And I like combining like. Film rules with art rules, I feel like definitely made it really good. I, I agree. I feel like your brain, Dimitri's brain, and my brain create like I I put like I put it in my interview. I put the skeleton there, and you guys put all the meat and bones and skin on it. Yeah. So it's definitely a team effort. It's not just one person. Oh, definitely not. See, when just one person does it, that's what the movie's like. Oh yes. <laughs> When, yeah. when, when when you guys aren't there to say, Sammy, wait, no, don't do that. Yeah. We get the movie. Oh, man. Now, in episode four, why did she agree to go back to Drake's? I think she agreed to go back to Drake's because it was a good opportunity to get her revenge on Drake. And, like, you never know, maybe I, Luna or Kate or Harry, because, you know... They were a part of it, too. Exactly. So she was probably like, well, maybe we can go to her, take over and have the place to ourselves and we could be in charge and we wouldn't do what Drake did. Um, <laughs> episode four, well Benny leaves and then we have to go get him, uh, or at least look for him, but we don't find him, spoiler alert, after everything. Um, don't find him because we get surrounded Woo! Um, by Drake and his goons. Um, the 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 fearsome foursome, as it was, as it were. Yes, actually. Um, against our fearsome foursome. After Mark. Um, so, fearsome fivesome, down to the fearsome. Anyways, um, so we go, and we get surrounded. Matthew's freaking out. He's like, "Why well, I don't want to be here. <laughs> um, Daisy almost gets chomped, and he steps up and steps on a zombie. Literally steps up. Um, that was an accident. That was good. I'm ashamed. No, I liked it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was neat. That was fun. The lights, the headlights go whoosh, and we're like... Oh, God. oh no, this isn't good. What was Matthew's exact thought when he saw lights when bad guys are supposed to be lurking? Yeah, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure if his mind was really even working at that point, because even from just one walker kill, just the step, I feel like his brain is kind of off. Mm -hmm. He's like adrenaline up after that much. And so he sees the lights come on and he just looks and he's like, what's happening? Um, I can't see through my eyeballs. I can't. My, my every, why is that so bright? Who turned the sun back on? It's the middle of the night. And um, I can't remember exactly how the, the on set it went, but I feel like he didn't. From what I remember, he doesn't start moving until everyone else starts moving. Yeah. Um, so I don't think he really, he, he picked up on it instantly because he's in the zone as it was. He's checking on Daisy, making sure she's okay. He's so focused on her in that moment that he doesn't, un he doesn't realize exactly what's happening until people start sprinting. And then he goes, he grabs Mark and just goes. Mm -hmm. um, and then Jeremiah starts screaming. <laughs> like a police siren. <laughs> That's all I think of when I watch that scene. I, know. I was like, who turned on the siren? Was that Jeremiah? I couldn't tell if it was you or him. I think it was Jeremiah. It was probably Jeremiah. It was, it was much deeper. I have a higher voice. Yeah. When the lights come on, what was he thinking? Oh shit, that's bright. Like, what? <laughs> 
my, my favorite thing though is I thought when you did that like that chase where it was right before the lights come on, I thought you were gonna cut the audio and you didn't. <laughs> so all you could hear is me going. I thought that was gonna be cut out, and so I was running it just to mess around. I thought there was gonna be like silent with like some tense music, and instead it's just me going. <laughs> I was I was debating whether or not that was you or Dimitri in, in post edit because I can't see either of your faces because you're moving so quick and it's at night. And that was what I hated is being in a chair like that. And if you've never really experienced this, you don't understand. If you're in a chair like that and it's dark and you're moving fast, it is the most intense, terrifying shit you have ever felt. Because especially with a chair that that that's that shitty, it is moving up and down at such a rapid <laughs> pace, you have no clue where you're going. It is terrifying. I think that's funny. Yep. Everyone's... Uh, I mean, the first real big cliffhanger. The appearance of Drake. What did, What was Wilbur thinking when the headlights popped on? Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> was he afraid that he was going to die? Well, judging at the speed he ran, because if you look in a scene-by-scene -scene comparison from what I from what I remember, it's Wilbur asking if Daisy's all right after the walker attacked her, which was you, actually. It was. Just shirtless, and I don't think with glasses. So it was... <laughs> details. Um, it goes from that scene to headlights come on, then everyone kind of takes some steps back. Then once everyone starts running, I don't think you see Wilbur. Because <laughs> I ran kind of fast. <laughs> you did. You outrun everyone each and every... We ha How many times do we have to do that running take? It was like six. More times than me slamming you on the ground, that's for sure. Yeah. This is my blessed angel child. <laughs> Not really, she's a demon. Um... Ah, the whip on that. Did you get that? I, I got that. Ah, oh, it stung. Episode four, the day that, or no, yeah, episode four, the day that the Ocean Man thing was uh, implemented. Oh, we, God. we we also got what two episodes done that day? Episodes four and five. Yes, that day was a lot of fun. That day was one of the funnest, I think. It, I yes. Oh, oh God, so many memes, so many. <laughs> yeah. You probably see it in the gag reel. I was acting like a oh, ooh, scuba booger butt, acting like a crab. Yep. To Ocean Man. That actually opens the gag reel. Oh God, I'm so embarrassed. You shouldn't be. I am so embarrassed. You shouldn't be. So, episode four, they're going out to look for Benny. You have Benny. I feel like. You know, I feel like by letting him go, I think she wanted to avoid people coming there because I think she knew people would die. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want Benny to die. She wanted to avoid that whole thing. So, how does Drake... How does Drake... Because he gets, he gets Benny. How does he make the connection between Benny with... Benny being with Daisy, Matthew, Mark, and Wilbur? Like, how does he, like... Use that. Use Benny as a chip, knowing that he's a dad. He's with them. Did he interrogate him before? Well, when you look at at Benny's body, when you look at how intact he is, Drake hasn't started toying with him yet. That's correct. He sort of he knocked Benny on his ass, and then he subdued him, and then just threw him in the car, and he was like, "This guy was scouting." And scouts don't scout if they're by themselves. So he's like, okay, there's another group, and if I pull him in, there's a good chance that these people will come. So we're going to be ready for the next few nights. So he took the chance of looking like an ass, being like... Yeah! We rolled down the window and be like, who the hell's that? <laughs> yeah. All right. He took the chance, and it, and it paid off. It paid off. It paid right. off. It uh, in episode four, that was... That was uh, that was not Drake who, sh who uh, or that was Drake who hit the headlights at the beginning. I know, filming wise, it wasn't. That was actually Michaela who hit the hit the headlights. I was Luna. actually behind the camera. Uh, yeah, Luna. She was behind the cam, or she was in the car. I was behind the camera, and God, I don't know why, because everything after episode four is just infinitely better than everything before episode four. Mm -hmm. But 
for some reason, the end of episode four is so freaking good. I, I don't know. I think it's just something about the way that we filmed it was just... The, just the rest of the, sh the, the show from the ending of episode four was just... Like episode one, end of episode four, and on. I just, there's just something about that that's just so good. There's just... The story was good. It was... Episode five... Ep let's, Drake... Let's talk... Let's talk about episode... Okay, episode five. Episode five. What was his intentions with... After he says, hey, asshole... Actually, before that. You know what? He kidnapped Benny. And as he's out, we knocked him out with Pansiel. We'll get into that later. What was his intentions? Like, okay, he could be with somebody. He could be with Daisy. What was Drake's intentions when he saw Daisy and Benny was in the back? What was he planning on doing. Drake had no idea what he was going to trade for. When he was going into it, he had no idea. He just knew he had a good bargaining chip. He's like, this is a life form that you are obviously connected with. I have it. What can I get for it? If it were a random band of survivors, he'd be like, give me literally everything you have. And he would have taken all of it. When he saw Daisy, Drake doesn't make sense, okay? Drake doesn't... He's... Obviously, he doesn't think straight. Yeah. He doesn't... He's not a normal thinker. So when he sees Daisy, everything goes out the window, and he was like, person for person, that's what's going to happen. And he also went into it knowing full well he was going to kill someone. That was his thing. So, he, so, so this actually leads into my next question. I mean, you sort of answered it, but I'm going to get the 100% confirmed answer. You said you followed the biblical saying of eye for an eye, person for a person. So, would Drake have just made the deal? No. He would have killed someone? He definitely would have killed someone. He oh. didn't want anyone coming back, and he probably would have hunted them all down anyway. So he would have let him go and then chased him after? He's... He's you, not... He's not... You just answered George's question. Or not... Uh, Wilbur's question in episode 7. George was... Uh, it, had they have made the deal... What would have happened is he would have secured Daisy. Would he still kill Mark? He would have killed everyone. Right there? Right there. If, if they had made the deal. Luna, though. You were going to kill me. Yeah. I he When he cocks the gun and points it at Benny, he was like, okay, this bargaining chip doesn't work. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't need it. So he, Dick. he was going to... He was going to kill... But then Luna was like... No, stupid. That's not how this works. So he was like, okay, then I'm just going to do what I was going to do anyway and kill someone. His What he would have done, had they made the trade, was he would have secured Daisy and then killed Mark. Right off the bat. And does he hate crippled people or something? No. He just sees someone in a wheelchair and he was like, wow, that's... That's, that's inconvenient. That's inconvenient. Let's shoot. I'm going to get rid of that. So he, he would, does. He had good intention. Drake is a good person. I'm He's helping you help. trim the fat. See, that, that's sort of... It's it's one of those things Needed where... And Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I'm sorry, but in the apocalypse, a handicapped person has much lower odds of making it and has much lower odds of a group accepting them. That's not my fault. That is not your fault or anyone's fault. That is just the harsh reality of the end of the world. That is correct. Now... That being said, Drake always does things... Drake, if he can, will do something horrible, and he will consider it a favor. He even says it to Benny when he has him tied up. I did you a favor. He was a cripple. What do you mean I did something wrong? So, he would have killed Mark, and then said, if, I, if you don't... If no one else wants to die, give me everything. And after they had given him everything, or not... He would have he would have told uh, Kate with the AK and Harry to just open fire, and he would have just mowed them all down. The only reason he didn't is because he got nothing that he wanted. Nothing went his way. It looks at the end of it that Drake is in a power position, but he got literally nothing, and he needed to retreat to go recoup because he's not used to not getting his way. Getting his way. He's a spoiled brat, and he did it to himself. Hey, hmm. question. Yeah. Why didn't? Drake just kills Daisy just He didn't want to first. kill Daisy. Why didn't he want to kill Daisy? As we saw with Benny, he wants to have a lot of fun first. Did did 
she trusts the group anymore after they refuse to make the trade. Yeah, I think that's what she, like, like I said, when she bonded with Wilbur the most, I think that's what she did. Because he stood straight up and said, no, we're not making the trade. Exactly. Like, he was kind of like the leader. He was like, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to keep her, we're going to make the deal. And I think she was just kind of like, oh, okay, so I guess there are good people now. Yeah. Not everyone is like Drake. Thing. What did Benny think was going to happen? Hmm. Well, the way uh, Daisy described him is kind of a psycho ass crack. Very, very, very accurate. But, is it? I don't remember episode three that much. Um, we're not talking about three, we're talking about five. I know. But he's using now from episode three to apply it to oh, Drake. Oh, Drake... don't let them catch you, otherwise you're going to wish you were dead. So he was like, all right, I'm going to get hurt real bad right about now. <laughs> and not there. He didn't, well, a little bit. We're some... getting there. We're, we're getting there. Um, basically like, okay, I'm, I might die. I'm probably not going to die. I'm probably going to get hurt, though, really bad. Somebody's going to die, probably. Because you seem like the kind of showman that looks like a climactic introduction or any time you have an interaction with somebody you don't normally interact with. So I think you need to put on a show. Like the, like the asshole you are. Did Matthew think someone was going to die? <sighs> I think Matthew was hoping nobody would. Well, yeah. I think Matthew... He, he was trying to keep the best case scenario in his head the whole time. Um, I don't even know if he was going... I think he was... He was really holding out for everything to go fine, but he was horrified that we were just going to be all killed. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. What, what was Mark's emotion during the whole surrounded thing? Was he scared? I would assume rather than that, it was only... You know, he never really seemed to have too much of a fear about him. It was more just, I will kill you if I have to to make it. And I think that was there in the mindset of, am I going to have to kill this person? <laughs> Switch was really flipped on that one, but... <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, did Mark ever think he was going to die? I think at the end, at some point, man, I'm going to get a little existential. I think at some point, honestly, we all know we're going to die. It's just a matter of, do you think it's going to happen that quickly? And I don't think any of us ever want to think that, unless we know we're 100%. Because I feel like if you get that feeling in you ever, as a human being, that's a very terrifying feeling. Yes, it is. I don't think anyone ever wants to embrace that feeling. Very true. That's like going into a standoff saying, I hope I get shot. Like, <laughs> in the back of your mind, you may know it's a possibility. You don't want to embrace it. Like, right. Right. And then there was the infamous death scene. Oh, yeah. And so, um, might, might if I just tell the story on that real quick? Go for it. So I already had a migraine going into this, which I unfortunately get quite a bit, and they're incredibly painful. But I, I did everything I could to make sure it didn't show. I, I wanted to give a good performance still. This being my last day, I wanted it to be great. It's my hope that I succeeded. Do you feel I did? I feel like you did. I think it was your best but, episode. When we went to do that, it was your idea of, do you mind if we flip the chair? And despite me being an incredible pain already, and knowing I would land on the back of my head, like the dumbass I am, I went, oh, yeah! <laughs> and so the first time we did it, as you may, I probably remember, we did it only on my own power. And I flipped the chair myself. Yeah. And it was the most slow motion, <laughs> awkward wheelchair flip of all time. It was It great. looked so ridiculous. And so we're like, <laughs> okay, we're going to have to do another take of that. And so we had George under one footrest, Zach under another footrest, <laughs> and me still ready to throw back the entirety of my giant gut. And we're like, okay, on three, one, two, three. Next thing I know, I'm laying on the back of my neck only. I'm like, ow? At which point I then proceeded to go to the other side of the field and vomit. Yep. He puked. We actually, we covered my shirt in fake blood. So that shirt is actually ruined now, by the way. Is it? Yeah, it just looks like, the front just looks like I was stabbed. <laughs> I was wearing these jeans at the time, and you can't see in the jeans, thankfully. It, they somehow, it somehow soaked through the jeans, 
and I was wearing a pair of white boxers at the time. <laughs> it now looks like I'm stabbed in the junk. Like, it, that is the only way it can be described. Like, it looked like someone just saw my scrotum and went, yeah! Now, in episode five, when uh, Drake orchestrated the surrounding of this group that was coming after Benny, what was Luna thinking? Did the right up up until the point where Drake cocks the gun and looks like he's gonna blow off Benny's head? What was she thinking the whole time Drake was just running his mouth? Was with the group, with yeah. everyone there. Um, I feel like she definitely knows what kind of a person she, he is since they've been together, and it's probably not the first time he's done something like that. So I feel like she knows he's not completely, like, too far. There's a cat butt here. Um, That's fine. It's precious. Um, I lost my train of thought. What was Luna's thought process while Drake had the group surrounded and he was threatening and throwing his weight around? Uh, I think she probably thought that's all it was going to be. Because I don't think she knew about... Daisy's dad because mm -hmm. I feel like if she had I don't think she would be well I don't know because I don't know how to look at the character I look at her as somebody who's like trying to keep Drake in place but also someone who like her will's not completely broken mm. so I feel like had she known about Daisy's dad I don't think she would be with him yeah, eat your own tail. It's tasty. While Luna was behind him, and Harry and Kate were, were you know, on the sides, and Drake was talking directly to him, what what did Wilbur think was going to happen? What was he like? Who? What did he picture for himself the next morning? If I wake up... <laughs> <laughs> if I wake up. <laughs> if I wake up. That's actually pretty solid. What was his thought process when Drake off to Mark? Off to Mark. Um. Thank God. On I... a more serious note, I would say, why him? Like, why him specifically? Mm -hmm. But in a joking manner, what are we gonna do with the wheelchair? And <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yes. It's fine. I'm I'm recapping all the episodes that haven't haven't been uploaded yet and that happened literally half a second ago <laughs> like you all you were almost were like in sync with the video that freaked me out that freaked me out that freaked me out it fr uh, ladies that freaked me out <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you heard it here first that freaked him out that freaked him out uh, it freaked him out it freaked him out dude. It, it freaked him out so he would have tied up daisy and done the exact he would have done worse to daisy than he did with benny he would have done like a flaming knife or something like that we we originally planned to cut Benny open with a flaming knife, but that didn't pan out. We didn't. We forgot the lighter fluid, and I didn't have the lighter fluid. I was gonna bring my hatchet, my Rick Grimes hatchet. I'm so pissed. There was a lot of stuff that uh, changed. The scripts are much different than what's on screen, but we'll get to that at the end after we're done talking about the episodes. Episode okay. six. Let's talk about episode six. So, as we can tell from the from transition from five to six, you already got a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. You probably you probably clung to me with the handle of Lucille on the face. So, okay, we know Drake is an asshole and likes hurting people. But what is, why is he specifically so intrigued with torturing? So intrigued with torturing me? I just met you. You're there. You're there. That's it. He doesn't need a connection. You are now associated with Daisy's side. Therefore, you are my enemy. Drake does not think like a person. He thinks like an asshole. Who... That's fine. Episode 6 is... is, is it's a very day. simplistic episode. It's not much goes into it. Episode 6 was a blast. It was, it was at first, not fun to film. We had a lot of issues on that set, and it was all because of the heat... She gets dehydrated because of her. Uh, she has to take medicines, and she uh, she got she needs water, and it was it was like 90, 95 degrees that day. Very humid, very hot as fuck. Not a fun day on set, but the outcome of it, I barely even remember it being hot when I watch it. Yeah, actually, I'm sure fun. when I go back and edit the gag reel, it's like 
right now I haven't done it yet. We just filmed the, the end of the show. What was it yesterday? Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. It was yesterday. We just to, it's August nineteenth right now. We finished the show August eighteenth. Oh, let's see. I hope we I hope we started June eighteenth. That'd be cool. My it, voice crashes there. Um, yeah, episode six. Drake's just having fun. There's no there's no actual point behind it. It's just Drake. It's it's re the point of it was to reinforce Drake's dick. Ness. Whoa. That's it. I, I didn't I, I didn't know there was Ness to it. I'm like mm. Now Drake is just an ass and there is he doesn't treat Luna all that great. He treats Luna Luna awful. He, he, he does not treat Luna that good. It's he beat on the only bargaining chip he has and then once he's told stop it, he's like fine, but you put it back together. He's not a good relationship partner. I don't know we'll he's ask not, he's, he's like the scum. He's like he's like Joe from Claimers. It's like it's not a... rapey. I think that's the one. I mean, we're not going to compare him to Negan or anything, but I don't think Drake's a rapist. He's he not... might be. No, I, he's not. He he's he's like Negan, where it's like, yeah, I'm married, but I'm going to try and fuck Olivia anyway. Episode six was just like, actually, you know what? There's a Ugh, no, that's episode seven. Episode six is like basically the only thing is like. Dick. With every hit, every stab, every cut, every beating, he's an asshole. Dick. <laughs> you know, and then when uh, Luna says, hey, you're getting out today, I'm, I'm like, okay, this bitch is sleeping with the guy who's torturing me, but she's letting me out. So it's like, she can, she's all right. She's all right. And then in episode seven, there's a shot of Sam twiddling... Uh, Drake twiddling the thing, and I'm sitting there like this. I'm like, now this whole time right now, I could be searching, but I'm instead of being tied up by this petty prick. I'm gonna be doing something right now. Accurate. A accurate. So, what did Benny feel when when the when he felt the rope come off his wrist? Mentally, there's a song by Kenny Loggins. I'm free. Heaven helps the man who fights his fear. Very good. Very good. Very happy. It's kind of pissy too, cause he grabbed his gun. Stupid Drake left a bullet in it, like an asshole dumbass. Left two. Left two bullets in there. And <laughs> and it's like, all right. He he, I think when he was working himself up, it was less of a working up, more of a working down. Don't kill Drake. You have bigger fish to fry, such as finding. The one that I was... He was thinking about going to look for rings. Aww. Yeah. You took that from me, prick. Uh, Luna. She tells Benny, I'm getting you out of here. Oh god, that. It was, uh, okay. Me and Zach in real life. Uh, <laughs> this was so hard to shoot, because I could not stop laughing or smiling. Cause Zach cussed at me and was trying to be mean to me, and when Zach's like that in real life, I laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so it was fake, and it still made me laugh. Um, oh, that's funny. That is funny. That I, oh, I had a, Sammy had to cut it because I smiled after my line. Even the the shot we use in the show is cropped a certain way <laughs> to where you can't see that you're smiling. Oh man, it's so hard for me to do a it's certain people it's really hard for me to do a scene. Uh, it's usually everyone in the scram. Uh, <laughs> this is the one I'm saying certain people is everyone. The last time we talked about approaching Drake's, Daisy was like, no, for the love of God, never. And then now she's the one riling up everyone to go get him. Well, like I said, she kind of like, was like, oh, she didn't trust him, and then she was like, yeah, maybe I could trust these people, and for them to trust me, we should get the revenge from Ma for Daisy and their characters, because Mark died. So she's like, okay, now they know what they what Drake did to me, the first we can, did. like, actually become a group and understand and win. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. No. You, you kind of win. win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the only one. You weren't in six. Okay, I was gonna say, in a perfect world, 
if the whole, all your guns, um, or there's another one, goes down, I like to think Matthew, he wouldn't try to switch sides, but he would try to be on the side that didn't lose. He would try to make sure he saves his, his, his own life, and if he can save himself, he'll, he'll be, he'd be able to save the others. Like, if he can sort of kind of be the bird on Drake's shoulder for a few moments, be like, listen, you have all our stuff, we're literally not a threat to you. We have all our people. We're good, we're good. And then we, I don't know. He, he'd try to appeal to, maybe appear to, appeal to Drake's ego. He's like, you've got us right where you want us. There's nothing we can do to you now. And then but other people get killed, probably, but... I don't know, that might have worked. Drake's a pretty simple... I mean, he likes to think he's good up here, and when he has, like, 12 hours to think of a plan, yeah, he could think of something, well, but... You mean, like, uh, how he trapped us at night? He had 12 hours. He had 12 hours. <laughs> no. He did. Seven is when we start planning the retaliation, mm -hmm. right? Um, Barry Martin. We're talking, and then it's Benny's escape. It's a big misunderstanding, because everyone starts going to each other at the same time. Yeah. If only they had met in the middle. Yeah, no, what if we the just horde met split Benny? you guys up? What if we just met the Benny? horde split you guys up, because Benny got lucky enough to not have to deal with it. You guys had to go around it, and then Drake also just kind of cut right through before they got through. And you guys sort of were pushed off, hence why Drake could make it back at the same time you did. Yeah. So, it was just the... Oh, hello. Oh, I skinned my knee. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know what he did? I took, I took, uh, he it's took... from the bug bite from, I we got bit up because I didn't put off on for the finale. Um, and I decided it was a good idea because this itch is really bad. What's going to itch it really well? An exfoliating glove. So I just, I did it and I just went ham. How'd that, that go? Well, now I'm missing a lot of skin on my knee, so I think we know how that went. Badly. Oh, and then, and then he came downstairs got two pieces of packing tape and some paper towels <laughs> and taped the paper towels to his knee. Because <laughs> it was gross and slimy. I didn't want it. We were talking about how Drake oh. or uh, Matthew could live I in... saved everyone's lives. Oh, hey, Dimitri. How's that? By hey. listening for the horde. Dimitri. You did, because Wilbur would have just went, Dad, hey, there, and opened the door. Hey, I'm going to open the in. door, everybody. What would Wilbur have done if it were him in Benny's place? Um... I have a feeling that if Wilbur was in Benny's place, um, I don't think he would live because I think Wilbur would have fought back like a lot, mm -hmm. like a lot more than Benny did. Because Benny, he got like a headbutt and some words, but Wilbur, I have a feeling he would have like kept trying. Mm -hmm. Like every time Drake got close, he'd like kick him or like headbutt him or something. And you feel like he would have pushed Drake. I have a feeling Drake would have killed him. Maybe Luna would have shown up like she did mm -hmm. and would have been like, Oh no, we're just camping! Or, yeah. you know, I feel like if it was Wilbur, Drake would be a lot more angry and it's like, I'm teaching him a lesson. And then <laughs> Luna would have been like, Hey, can you maybe not? <laughs> <laughs> Luna was definitely the only good thing about Drake. And, and then I kill her. <laughs> and then you killed her. Going to get Benny. It's all a big misunderstanding, because Benny's really already is. on his he, way. He's already, like, dead, yeah. kinda. Uh, they don't know that. They think Drake's gonna, yeah, rough him up a bit, but, like, he don't, they don't know that Benny's, like, dead. <laughs> um, I have a feeling that, like, let's say they actually got in. Let's say Drake was thinking, oh, no, they'll attack later at night, and they went earlier at night, mm. and they snuck in and found Benny. Maybe they wouldn't have rescued him right there. Maybe someone would have saw them, seen them. Dimitri, English major. Is it saw or seen in this case? Be the sentence. If someone would have seen them. Yeah. Okay. If someone would have seen them, I have a feeling that either someone would have died. One of Drake's. Well, I guess that kind of goes into someone. <laughs> one. Someone would have died, or they would have left Benny. Maybe in a perfect world they would have gotten Benny and left. But, um, this is the apocalypse that doesn't happen. Yeah. Where was I? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember the question. I was, in draw I was involved in what you were saying. Um, um, 
if Benny or if Hold Will, it, hold on. Let's let's try to retrace our steps. <laughs> Episode seven. It's all a big misunderstanding. Benny's on his way out. Yeah, Benny's already escaped, and Wilbur and the group are eager to go get him. So, with Benny's luck of getting out and our group's impatience to, and, and it's a rightful impatience because I would want to go too would want to go save their friend because they didn't wait or because Luna waited too long everything bad happens and Benny gets back nobody's there in episode 7 we get the backstory we get the backstory of Daisy basically and we get the backstory and Benny when he was taught what 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 was um what was Drake thinking when Benny wasn't you know all pissy mad at him when he was actually like well tell me what's going on tell me what you did what was he thinking like when he was like when Benny wasn't vengeful pissy and was actually asking him what had happened yeah Drake he was definitely taken aback he was like I just like clobbered you I'm planning on cutting your fingers off and you're gonna start a conversation with me that's kind of cool it what's was like? it was more like he's like uh, he definitely didn't like you. Or like, but we're talking about the characters. Drake definitely did not like Benny. But he respected him in the fact that he had no problem just saying what what was, what was he was thinking. What, he wouldn't hide it to not get punched. And yeah, that is true. Drake was like, okay, this kid's got nuts. This, that's, that's cool. Even though I kept calling you a kid in the show when you're only a few years younger than me. And you're... I'm 17. I am less than... You are less than an adult, so I can still call you that. I'm less than half of a year from being an adult, I which is that. fucking crazy. Anyway, the, uh, Drake, he just openly spills the beans on what had happened with Daisy's father and why Daisy left. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like he, honest for honest. It's like, what you, what the fuck happened? Just how I'm Yeah, he was like, that's why he told him is because he was like, oh, well, you just flat out asked me and you're in a position of zero power. I have all these weapons and you can't, you don't even have your hands free and yet you're going to ask me. So I'm going to, to reward you for such, you know, wearing your big boy boy, big, big boy balls that day. I I'll, I'll give you the answer you want. And then he, he yeah. does. And he was like, okay, well, I killed Daisy's dad and she wasn't happy about it. So she left. And because he's a control freak and he is unhinged, it doesn't work in his head that that's okay. Right. When normally that, is that okay. would be totally fine. That is actually an underwhelming reaction. Yeah. Daisy, like, like, Daisy, if I were Daisy, I would have killed Drake in his sleep. I would have been like, you know what, it's okay, Drake, it's fine. And then as he goes to sleep, I would stab his jugular as many times as I could before he started to stop me. Anyway, uh, when he sees that was, Kate... Wait, can, can we go back and readdress to that? <laughs> no. Because you seem to have a hidden <laughs> hatred for your own character. Can we address what would happen if you played Daisy? Well, if I played Daisy and Kaylee played Drake, I feel like we need to change the names a little bit. Okay, come on, fuck off. Was... What was going through his head when he found Kate dead? Was it um, was it like, oh shit, I'm sad because this person's dead, or was it a control thing? Oh, he's not Benny's not supposed to do this, or what? What was it? Was it anger? Was it sadness? Was it control freakness, or what? What the, what, what the fuck was he thinking? He was not. He didn't care about Kate. He cared that Benny did something. That something of. Something in his realm of control was tampered with. He did not care that Kate is now deceased. He cared that Kate was made deceased. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes it's like you did something you weren't supposed to. Yeah, Drake, Drake didn't like. You can even see it on his face. He just like within th a minute of finding Kate's body, he's smiling, saying, "I'm going to solve all our problems tonight." Kate being dead is obviously not a problem in his mind. <laughs> Kate is Kate being dead is he lost some of his manpower. He's like ah damn. He's like damn it. Ouch! I stubbed my toe. I'm gonna kick your ass for that. Okay, because before the apocalypse, Drake and Luna got married, and they were happy. He wasn't a dick face. He was a. He had. The he was a douchebag, and he got into a lot of bar fights. Did he cheat on her? No. Was that like one of his codes? 
more or less. He did not cheat on Luna. Did he check other girls out? Yes. He was one of those. He was one of those where, like, Luna, he could be holding Luna's hand and he would see a waitress go by and he would just... An asshole. He never touched, never kissed, never... But he Bad. definitely expressed interest. But he never did. Do um, you think it was just a fuck with Luna because he's a control freak and wants to keep her down? Probably. That was a very good sentence. I just said that. That was, the, that was the best you've ever spoken, ever. I'm yeah. Glad that, I'm glad the camera was rolling. Through. Yeah. Now, episode 7. Luna lets Benny go. And then, because of that, Kate dies. Why doesn't Luna tell Drake, I was the one who let him out? Because if you remember, Drake says, that Benny kid got out and he killed Kate in the process. Why didn't Luna say, well, I let him out, dumbass? Uh, I feel like because he would have got angry towards her and he's unpredictable. I mean, she's seen thus far what he had done. And to be the person closest to you and to have done that, I feel like he would have snapped further. Mm hmm like, sort of like a betrayal of what he thought he still had. Yeah, and to me, he's kind of like a sociopath. And they usually are really close to one or two people, and that's it. So, I feel like she definitely feared what he could have done to her, and feared what he m might just do on his own. Had he, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. just, it would have... It would have been a mental pressure that he probably shouldn't sustain. Yeah. Because we don't know where it would put him. Yes. Does Luna feel any guilt about getting indirectly killing Kate? Um, I would like to say yes because she's she still has humanity, where she's kind of like the opposite of Drake. Mm -hmm. So she feels everything. I mean, I don't portray her that way. I know I, I almost oh god, so dull. But like as a character, I feel like her will is not broken. And yeah, she was kind of beaten down, and but she still has her humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Episode 8. Episode motherfucking 8. He gets home, like, alright, I am out of this prick's house. Let's regroup. Get the hell out of here. Find my girlfriend and bring vengeance back to Drake. Nobody was home. <laughs> And there was a sh like a there's like a two three second shot where I'm just like looking around. I tried so hard. I know it didn't really look like it because the quality wasn't great, but that meme of that weird the guy. John Travolta. Yeah, he's doing the whole like what the hell? I kind of wanted that. And then I say shit fuck. That's a movie reference. And I had the pan. And I was so happy about that pan. And then You're Dimitri going into episode nine, are you? Mm -hmm. Episode nine. Uh, oh wait, the pan. The pan, not the, like my pan. Right. Like, it was pan on pan for a second there, and I won. I, I got to smack him with that. Your ears were ringing. It was pretty great. And I wanted to do it again. I, we did it twice. We did it once. We did it twice. We did it once. We did it once. We did it once. Episode 8 was when... Beginning of the end. Yes. Was Drake getting in and starting the fight with Benny while you guys are in the woods talking... The question. Character deaths. Yes, okay, uh, my Harry dies. Yeah. Harry gets that's shot. That's when in people start dying consistently. Every episode after eight. No, every episode after seven, because my mom and then my dad and then no, my dad and then Michaela and then everyone else. When Wilbur asks, "Oh, should we have made the trade?" and you shut him down, was there any time where he did consider making the trade? I don't think he ever considered making the trade, but um. Because again, he he won over the trust of Daisy to like have them work together, and I don't I don't think he'd so easily throw that away. But um, at the same time, he has Benny, so I think I think he was against making the trade, but he was also against letting things happen the way that they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, Mark's dead, but um, poor Mark. I feel like he would have been more on board with the whole. Um, the fake switch. If, if we if we talk talk it out, yeah, sort of thing. If we reach an agreement, be like, listen, or even just like if we give Daisy back, but also send someone else to to be like, make sure she's not 
to keep well it in done. check to make sure that he, she doesn't just get executed when we get back. Don't. Um, and, but also at the same time, cats everywhere. Yeah. I'm, I'm like Snow White, I really am. Yep, there's a cat Snow right White there. And, cats. and a cat right there. He just slunk back there again. In that, we see him on the phone with Luna. I'm walkie talkie. That was actually a pencil sharpener. And a it pen. Was a pencil sharpener and a pen. Which was, I'm very proud that we made that look good. Okay, so. Was Drake lying to her when he said that we'll change after? Yes. He flat out was like, we're gonna kill all the fuckers. Drake was absolutely lying when he said we can try something else after. Because he knew. And it was only him and Luna. And Harry. But he was like, I mean, Harry just listens to what I say. And that's two against one. And if you have something to say about it, I mean, it's two against one. I have an AK-47. Yeah. He, uh, Drake flat out lied just to get her off the walkie so he could get to what he wanted to do. Ugh, what a prick. Yeah. Okay, so, um... What was... Okay, I'm assuming Harry had the same emotional impact as, as Kate did. Yeah, it was more of a, damn it, you two fucker. guns can't shoot at the same time now. Okay, well, crossbow gun. Okay. But, okay, so... Episode eight. Okay, for the first time in probably ever, Drake, physically and mentally, was knocked on his ass. Yes. He got smacked with the pan, and I threw, I threw your insults in your face. What was, what was he thinking when like he's like, wait a minute, I'm not all that. He definitely had a rude awakening. That he's it was hurt. definitely like, wow, that hurt. That hurt real bad. And, and uh, my ears were ringing for a solid like two or three minutes after the, the pan smack That's because. Sick. I don't know, it was the metal clang against my head. I actually, like, this ear was ringing for, like, three minutes, and this one for, like, 15 seconds I couldn't hear out of. And then everything's fine now, but <laughs> and you know it what? hurt. I held back. I was really pissed. I wish I really... I should have hit you, like, the top of the head more. Yeah. That well, either been... way, you look great. It, yeah. She tells Drake, you don't have to kill these people. You don't have to do this. Bless you. I hate yawning. <laughs> she tells Drake, you don't have to kill these people. Does she expect him to not? Does she expect him to come home? I feel like she's trying to talk sense into him. Because she still cares about him. Now, when in episode 8, when Wilbur's talking to Matthew and he says, should we have made the deal? Did Wilbur ever consider making the deal? moment when the deal was first offered by Drake before like before they sh saw like oh Drake's actually just a psychopath I would have thought that maybe he would have considered it because they were outmanned and outgunned and just outplayed so I would have said Benny not Benny Wilbur would have thought like I mean maybe this will turn out for the best we don't really know Daisy and we know Benny more than we know her, so if we just trade off, then we can take Benny, sorry Daisy, and we can leave. Let's take Benny, sorry Daisy. No, but after, like, Drake starts destroying Benny, well, not roughing Benny in, um, that scene, I would have thought that, like, that thought was, like, completely erased. Like, no, if we give over Daisy, she's gonna get this and worse. Yeah. They're approaching Drake's. They're separated from Drake's by the horde that we see at the end. Now, when it... What is... Is she nervous? Going into fighting Drake, is she, like, anxious? Is she, like... Yeah. Nail-bitingly... Not nail-biting. I think she's more, like, focused. Because her, her character is more, like, the complete opposite of me. So she's like, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, yeah, let's do it. She's not really yeah, thinking of what could possibly bad happen. She's more into like, let's this just do is, it. Yeah. So my question to you is, what did Daisy think of Wilbur's plan? Get in, get out, avoid Drake if we can. Stupid. That's what I thought. 
just stupid. That's it. I mean, like... She knew she was, that's not what's gonna happen. Like, I think she had her own plan of her own, like... Like, I think instead of, oh, we're gonna help Benny, because, you know, she only saw him, like, once. Yeah. So she's like, okay, I'm actually gonna kill Drake. I don't care what Matt says, or Matthew, I'm gonna kill Drake, and that's it. That's my part. That's it. Okay. Episode, episode nine. Episode nine. We can't really talk about mentality because it's mainly physical. So you can you can you can put in the punches. There are some punches in there that are real. So I took two real punches in a row, and, and the then headbutt. then the follow up headbutt to those two real punches. The headbutt is also real, and you will see it in the gag reel. And if you look in the show, there is solid contact. Uh, and three of the four hits. It was right after Zach slammed me against the wall. That we dented heavily. We did dent the wall, and it needs repairs we have, we still. Have to repair the wall big time. Um, I tried to get it on camera, but my camera's not very good. It's good for daytime stuff, but if you're just looking at a wall, it's just kind of fuzzy. But uh, no, Drake just threw everything he had at Benny through the whole fight, and he was just exhausted by the end of it. The throw hurt because I had to take it two or three times, <laughs> and each time there, I don't know. See, I haven't done the gag reel yet. I don't know if there's any proof of this, but I did. I used no padding whatsoever. I, I just took the fall on the floor. It was carpet, so it wasn't awful. Same here. The big super slam with him, with 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 Benny. I'm not. That, that was. Excuse me. That was also very much real. He knew, and you'll see it in the finale too, where he goes for more mental stuff when he can. Because, especially after this huge physical altercation with Benny, he doesn't have a lot of physicality left in him. Where, as you see, both Matthew and Wilbur don't really have much of a problem taking him down. Yeah. So, he has no mental hold over Benny at all. And he knows from previous that Benny's sort of just, it's flat out. He doesn't have manipulation over him. He just has the, the beef between the two of them. And, and he just... The only thing he could have used was, uh, you thinking of killing me. Yeah, I just call back to the torture, but it's like, what is that really gonna do? It's gonna piss me off, make me want to kill you more, and it was kind of Exactly, stupid. so it was more like... Hence why I tossed you. The toss hurt. So, so, okay. The strangling was just because he was impatient. That was the impatience. And then he saw the little paper, and Drake is one to just investigate what he's curious about. Saw the paper sticking out, grabbed it, and he was like, oh, this is a woman. And he cared about it. It really would piss him off if I pinned this to my bedroom wall, wouldn't it? And then that's just what he was going to do with it. That was his plan with the paper. He was going to just pin it above his bed, just so in the afterlife, Benny could be pissed off. Forever. Forever. My ghost would come down and take it. He was, he was, he was kind of hoping for that. Episode 9 was a blast. And that was then, so fun to just see. to come back... At, the first thing I ever filmed was the fight scene for episode 9, and <laughs> the one of the last things I ever filmed, like months later, was Luna's death, and that was... That's not true. Yeah, it is. last thing you filmed was... I said one of the last things I filmed. Ah. Uh. No, uh, one of the last things I filmed was Luna's death, and, and that was hard because I had to make myself think Michaela was actually getting hurt, hence the, oh my god, she's dying face. Uh, Michaela did great. She did great. She did fantastic. George, I don't know, we'll talk about... We'll talk about Wilbur. With George. I wanted to incorporate just a little bit of that. And it was pretty great. I got to kick him and toss him. And the thing is with the toss, the toss, what happened was, okay, so Sam says, toss me halfway. Toss me halfway. I'm like, what the hell? Okay, I'm gonna go like this. And then you're gonna almost go over my shoulder. Like, no, f go! I'm throwing you. And he didn't know that I was going to do this. It was a miscommunication. Miscommunication. Don't even a miscommunication. I actually threw him over, and it was pretty great. And I landed on his throat. It hurt. It was great. Now, how does ba if Benny could and exist in the afterlife and just see the way he died, would he be happy with it? Hell no! I wanted to kill him. Okay. I mean, I what mean... What was the last thing Benny thought about? While he was being strangled, what was he thinking? Oh, there's a few things he was thinking. One, get this little prick off my throat. Two, well, I'm never... Because of my petty, vengeful, 
temper. I'm not gonna find my girlfriend get Episode nine! Approaching. What did, did Matthew think of Wilbur's plan? I feel like deep down, Matthew knew that Wilbur was going to murder someone. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at that point he's like, he expected it to be Drake mm -hmm. and not Luna. I think um, everything would have been a lot easier if he just kind of moved his moved over a little bit. Because I think um, I think Luna would have been upset. Luna would have been very upset. Um, but she wouldn't have been. But she wouldn't have. She wouldn't have died. Uh, what is, does that where I die? That is your last scene. Okay, oh god. Uh, I wanted so much more for that scene. I am so heartbroken. We can go reshoot it. No, that's fine. I don't want to do the work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted so much more for that scene, like, film-wise. Uh, I kind of feel like I'm a potato stick with ketchup falling. Stop! Uh, that's what it felt like. Um, I thought there'd be more in the shot. Uh, you'll, everyone will see what I mean later, but like... Or if you've already watched it, you know. <laughs> that's true. Yes. Uh, that was definitely fun to do, though. It was. That it was... was, it was you, I don't think anybody saw it, or you might have cut the film and got rid of it, but like, when I fell, my wig popped off. It was really funny. Did it? It did. Kaylee laughed. She was not ready for the wig to pop off. It was great. I didn't know the wig fell off. Yeah, it popped off. It was so... I fell, and when I hit the ground, I was like, bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish I would have got that. Because I had it fastened just in the back. I couldn't get it fastened on top, because it was too thick. The bobby put in the bobby pins wouldn't go down into it and so the wig cap and through my hair because that's how I normally do it I really secure it on but it's too thick in the front like yeah. the padding underneath you, you, yeah people who know wigs know what I'm talking about okay um episode 9 there wasn't oh episode 9 you guys approach I'm Merc Luna yeah what why did um Wilbur decide to take out Luna as opposed to Drake Drake wasn't there. Drake was there. Well, he shot Luna. Then, if I remember correctly, the scene plays out. Wilbur sees Drake after he shot Luna. And then he's like, oh, I can take out both of them. And then... The zombies. zombies. Then the zombie. So, if he saw Drake first, he definitely would have just gone for Drake. Um, I have a feeling that... Wilbur had the mentality of one for one. It's like, you took Mark, so we'll take her. We'll take Luna. And then he's like, oh, wait a second. What is one for one? I could just take, I could just flip the entire table and win <laughs> by killing Drake. <laughs> then a zombie flipped the table instead. Zombies are the ultimate threat after all the people are gone, they're still around. And Wilbur got the worst of that. I think. He forgot about that. Yeah. No, Drake got the worst of it. Well, he deserved the worst of it. Now, in the finale, everyone's favorite episode. Yeah. When Daisy's running and she sees Panseal, is she angry about what it represents, or is she happy that she's like, I've got his precious, and now I'm going to smack him with it? I think it's both. Because she's like, that's what her father died. So... And it was, it's his prized possession, so maybe, like, it's like a mix of both. Gotcha. Now, what did she feel after she smacked his knee out? I don't think she was satisfied. I think she was satisfied when she was, like, finished talking to him. Because you see her, like, throw it. I mean, she obviously doesn't care. She just kind of was like, yeah, I got him. But then she kind of was like, well, the horn's there. Save my energy and make it painful. And then I think Ooh. she was kind of like, Wilbur, why did you shoot him? I was just about to ask, was she disappointed when Wilbur killed him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, and we'll ask George about that when I get a hold of him next, but um, Wilbur's more of the get it done type in my mind. I feel like he wanted to see it done. He didn't want Drake lurking. Yeah. That could, I don't know, I'll ask him. So what was Daisy's... Because in between Drake getting shot and the campfire, definitely about six hours have passed. Yes. What was her reaction when Wilbur said, I'm bitten? I think you could tell that she was, like, 
at the campfire, she wasn't talking, they weren't talking, they knew what was going to happen. They knew he wasn't going to make it, and it was too late to do anything, if there was anything to do. So I think she just kind of accepted it, she was like, she, I think she, now if we did do a prequel or a sequel or whatever, she would kind of be like distance and would not make a connection with anybody, because she was like... Because it was more like, oh, she finally made someone she can trust, and that he's already dead now. After finally being able to trust again, in the slightest bit. Now, because none of us besides you would be able to be in it, I don't think we're going to continue the story forward. Well, duh. Now, my question to you is, did is Daisy still alive? I think so. I think... I, you know, what I like to think is maybe she did follow and, like, fell through her plan, wait until the Horde leaves, wait till Wilbur passed and everything, and she goes back to the place, to Drake's place, takes over, clears everything, and makes it her own, and, like, just kind of an apocalypse happy ending. Sure. Now, I think this is probably the last question, is if she did go back and clear out Drake's, did did she bury everyone? I like to think that she buried, like, Luna, she buried Harry or whatever. Harry's back at your place. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean, like, uh, Kate, she buried him, because she would... But I think she has Drake's head on a stick. I was about to ask that. <laughs> I was about to ask that. Now, because yeah, I think it would be like symbolism, because it's like you did that to my dad, so there you go. And I think he's still a walker too. It didn't hit the brain. So you kept Drake alive and put his head on the pipe. Yeah. So after, in show canon, many years down the road, Drake is a rotted skull snapping on a on a stick. Yeah. Fitting. I think she, that's what she would do. Definitely got the grossest ending. Yeah. So let's talk about the finale. And obviously you're, I mean, you shot most of it, but you were dead. Would you, would you say that it's a fair statement to say that Luna's death is the most unjust death in the whole show? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, it's a point of relevance. Uh, I don't think Biddy, well, I don't know. I thought Benny's death was, like, uncalled for, too. But, like, at, at the same time, he killed two other people. That is true. Um, then again, they were trying to kill him. So it was kind of like a self-defense thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't see him being in the wrong. Uh, but I would definitely... Yeah, Luna's probably the most unjust for the simple fact of she hadn't killed anyone. She actually was trying to help she the She was trying side. to save everyone. So, would you say that, out of the whole show, the most evil action was Wilbur shooting Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, is Wilbur worse than Drake? No. Uh, cause all is fair in love and war. And this was war for them. It was. So... It, he's not evil. He was just killing the bad guys, which that's is what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't consider Luna a bad guy. Well, yeah, I, but you get the point. No, I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I was just letting you know. Instigating? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The finale was, was very oh, good. Okay, I did make myself cry, and you'll see it in the gag row. It was not easy, especially with Dimitri and George in my face. But it was also fun, because... Having Michaela on set helped a lot. Um, it was just... You could see the transformation that I was talking about in 9 on Drake's face. Because, like I said, he would go from... Like, depressed to... Just I'm going, I'm going to do what I have to do to get the revenge that I want. Right, because he's a vengeful idiot. He's a, he's a vengeful idiot. Yeah, he is. And you can even see it happen once he says, "Give like, Drake was going to let Matthew shoot him at first. He wasn't going to fight back. He just fucking... He was just like, wait a minute, 
I've exactly, got... exactly. He goes like you can see Drake. He he wasn't even angry faced. He was just like, just do it. Like Matthew even says, I was totally on board with this next part. What comes next? I was totally on board with. And what was and and uh, Drake's sort of like, me too. Just what do I have? Every person in my group is now dead, and Daisy isn't. And there's many of you. And because he's still in the she's dead state, so he was like, okay. And then once he says, now where's Benny or give us Benny, I can't remember exactly what he says. It's like, oh wait, I still got and something then to do just, before I die. You can see it change on his face. He's like, I have an in. I might be able to make this work. And he gives him the picture, and and he, he's banking on the fact that he knows. But considering that they're a group, he would probably know, and he did. And he wanted to use Matthew's like cinnamon roll in this because he saw him in five is weak he's the weakest he's the softest I don't know about weakest. weakest but he saw it in five where Wilbur had the the stone face where it's like we're not making the deal and he he knows Daisy so he was like this one is the one that I can get in here the easiest so he tries and it works very well but he uh, Matthew's smart enough to know something's probably coming, so he barely gets out of the way of that pan seal shot. And then, obviously, you know, the fight carries on, and and uh, Dimitri did a fantastic job pretty much choreographing that whole fight. The, 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 here's the thing. His death was supposed to be much less... Don't even say it. Don't even say it. It's embarrassing at this point, isn't it? He was supposed to slip and fall and break his neck on a rock. I thought it was the swimming pool. We were gonna... It's pathetic compared to what they did now. Dimitri was saying... He goes I, he's like, I almost want to... Because that's how Dimitri always starts his... I want to change something you made. With He goes, I almost want to change something. Almost. He'll say almost want to. Where it's like, I don't... Where it implies I don't want to, but I almost want to. And then I'll be like, well, what do you have in mind? Because everyone wrote their own characters. I'm getting to that here in a minute after we're done talking about all the episodes individually. Um, where... I was like, well, what do you have in mind? Because everyone, it even says in the credits, everyone wrote the show. I, I put the bones there and everyone put the meat on it. And so I was talking to him and I said, what do you have in mind? He says, I kind of want you to shoot me. And I'm like, well, I mean, so many people have been brained. And he goes, no, 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 somewhere else. And I'm like, well, if she just got shot in the chest. And I'm like, what about the throat? And you can like do like a, a bleeding, gagging kind of thing. And he was like, that's so good. And then he just looks at me and he just goes, is Drake the type of person to just empty I know, the gun? I, I, I and you were that. there for that, and I was like, yes, he is. And then that made the finale so much better. Yeah, if so you did, if you much did your bitch death uh, at first, it would have been kind of like, um... Bad. Yeah, it would have been. I'm so, this is I'm why... I'm so happy that... Like right, I said, I put, I put the structure of the, the story, and everyone else modified it to the character that they fleshed out. Fighting George was probably the most painful thing I've done on the show. Not my flip onto your throat? No. Not even that? Nope. I landed on your throat. I took that fall five times on the hard ground. And two of them, two of them you can see, or three. The best fall, and I'll put it in right now. The best fall I took was per flat on my back, couldn't breathe. It was the same feeling of yours. Except the only reason it was worse is because not only did I take it three more times afterwards, but I couldn't use it because Michaela was in the background. She was dancing or... She was dancing or doing something. And I took that fall several times. George is a very... He's a very good physical actor. I didn't, I didn't expect that. And I don't know why I didn't expect that because he's been good in everything else. The fight scene with George was probably the most... Physically painful? Easily. Because of the fall. And today, because did, we did it yesterday... I'm very sore. I'm very sore in my hips and in my shoulders, and I have to go to work tomorrow. It's not going to be fun, is he? And George, if you listen in the show, the first every time Wilbur says Daisy, it sounds like Dizzy. And we've been giving him and shit. And I've been giving him shit for it, and it's so fun. But yeah, it's like, it's like she is the unknown jewel to take out Drake. Yeah. And then George does that shot, which was badass, but I'm kind of upset because I wanted Drake to suffer a little more. We've... We, J Wilbur is sort of the type where he's like, if I don't see it, then I don't know it happened, and he will dwell on it. We're going to talk more about the bite with George, but... Which I played, by the way. 
What? I played that walker. That bit him. Oh, yeah. Zach played the walker that bit. Walker Benny came back and bit George. The, um... The, uh, the finale was definitely my favorite. And the contacts that you see at the very end, and, and, and I'll, probably a lot of people won't see it because not everyone's going to watch through the credits. But there's an after credit scene where uh, Drake walk, wakes up as a, as a walker after the horde passes and everything. This is the day after. And um, he wakes up, and I got the contacts in, and he's a walker. And, he, and then uh, he's just stuck, eternally roaming, chewing on Thanks. organs and... He gets what he deserves, and it, it feels good. Yeah. Because that I think that's the most unjust death of the entire show. What about Mark? <laughs> what about Mark? It was opposing sides. It's warfare. That was... The thing is, that was like sending a message. What you did was just kind of cool. Well, I also sent a message and revenge for Mark. See, this is why I like writing characters this way, because there is that gray area that you cross into, and it's like, so who's the Where bad it's like, guy? It's like, is, is Wilbur the baddie? I think Wilbur was the, the, the most evil out of all of us. Even including Drake? I mean, out of all of us. Out of, oh. out of the good guys. Out of the, On the show, but, Drake takes that kick, but uh, out of everyone, I think Wilbur... Wilbur is the closest to Drake. I so feel I'm like... I, okay, I feel like... Wilbur is the season one Rick to Drake's shame. And we're like, Whereas if time would have gone on, Wilbur, Wilbur would get close to Drake, but not fully there. Mm -hmm. So you slept with my wife. I mean, no. Drake's a scumbag. You probably would have. <laughs> Had you, I mean, you did wow. kill Luna. He was no Here's longer attached. Here's the thing. I'm is, talking for Drake, not me. Is Drake is Drake the kind of guy to do that though? Because that adds a whole another layer into the Daisy situation. When Drake stands up and gives over the paper to Matthew, what what is he thinking? What is Matthew thinking? Yeah, what is Matthew thinking? This has got to be a trick, but there's no way. Well, he would know about the picture mm -hmm. if he had captured him and tortured him. And presumably rummage through his pockets, especially with the revolver. Is this yours? I mean, I took it from you, so. Um, uh, I feel like he definitely knows, and even if he's lying about it, he knows that that'll get to him. Mm -hmm. Because I think up until the point where he opens it, I think he still thinks that he's lying, but I think the blood on it was like, maybe he isn't. <laughs> Um, I don't remember, does does Drake tell um, Wilbur and uh, Daisy that Benny's dead? Benny's dead? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, I threw that in last minute because I was like, wait, these two are going to leave without Benny. I was, gonna, I was just going to say the same thing. I'm like, did they leave without fully checking anything? No, uh, he, uh, when Wilbur's wailing on him, he says, where's Benny? And I was like, I kill him just like I killed your tall friend. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Right here, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> so when in the last moments when he's bleeding when Matthew's bleeding out from his neck what is going through his head well shit <laughs> <laughs> this isn't good well, damn <laughs> it's like I just wanted to make a friend no um I think it's um the he's trail. definitely surprised <laughs> because in that moment where did the gun come from and then he's like I think Everything sort of processing at like hyperspeed. He's like the gun, my gun. Oh no! Because <laughs> wasn't that that was Mark's gun? That was Mark's gun. That um, it's not said, but I, I, I took Mark's gun after the big gun switch, um, where Benny got the shotgun. Um, Will ended up with the rifle. Will got the rifle. I got Mark's gun. Mark didn't have a gun. Um. So, I took that after that. So, it's actually kind of funny how, um, Drake kills Mark, I take Mark's gun, Drake kills me with Mark's gun. <laughs> um, the first death is also one of the last deaths, in a way. Like, the first death leads into the last death. Yeah, I wanted to, second to last. Really. I wanted to stitch a lot of stuff together because the movie yeah. sort of was like scene after scene. Where this one, I wanted flow and inner 
Everything that happens before will affect something ahead of it. Yes. Um, and if you change one of those events, the entire thing changes it, dramat dramatically. It was a much more. It was a better structured. Yeah. Thing. Um. Because if you if you take any given scene, probably from episode episode four onwards. Yeah. And you change one little thing, except for like maybe some of the Drake and Benny stuff. Um. Because a lot of that was pretty isolated. Yeah. In its, in its own. But like if. You, you could change one thing about anything, and it'll change how the rest of the show goes on. Like, anything down from um, who was holding a gun when we got surrounded to... Because um, I feel like if if Mark did have that gun, at the, at the same time Wilbur did, I feel, like, I feel like a shot would have been fired there that was not from Drake. Mm -hmm. um, if... You... you just anything, because it's all—it's all—it it builds off of itself. Instead, the movie was kind of like a row of houses, whereas this is an apartment building. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Not at all. I mean, I—I un I understood. You—you <laughs> you understand the meaning what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but where it, it, it's much—it's got a lot more to it, a lot more interlacing story. Yeah, that makes for a much better experience. Yeah. So are there any last thoughts, comments, behind the scenes knowledge um, before we watch the finale? I'm a little, I'm, I'm upset that Matthew's dead. I'm upset that everyone's dead. I'm upset that the show's over. You're not upset that Drake's dead. I'm not upset that Drake's dead. Here's the thing. If we were to leave enough characters alive to continue, um, we would've. Mm -hmm. And I think wrapping it off like this, tying it up with a bow, um, a nice, neat and nifty bow, I think is the best course of action. I agree. Because if we do anything else, it's going to be freestanding and it's going to be on its own. Um, which is going to be good, which is going to be great. Yeah. But, um, if, if too many characters survived, we would have eventually driven this into the ground. Oh, easily. <laughs> the college of... Write eight at college, so you just... <laughs> I don't know she's been doing that for years. What? She so hasn't even done a year old. 40 role. years. In the cat womb. Like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's all I got. All good? Yeah. Um, okay, so... On episode 10. On to episode 10. Why... No, not why. When Wilbur finally, after seven episodes, gets reunited with his shotgun, how good does that feel to him? Uh, you find five dollars on the floor, mm -hmm. you pick it up, it's two fives stuck together. <laughs> that feeling. <laughs> oh, that's a good like feeling. Like that feeling of just getting that. You, you, can't, you can't beat that. It's... Because it's money. <laughs> well, I mean, in this case, it's a shotgun. But in the apocalypse, it's better. Loaded than money. shotgun. Yes. Loaded. Yes. Should I tell how much ammo is in the shotgun? <laughs> two, two rounds, two shots. Okay. Two. Is the last one for Wilbur? We'll get to that. Okay. Now, when Daisy and Wilbur both look over and they see Matthew choking on his throat. Choking on his throat. It's semi accurate. Getting shot many time. Because, you know, Drake is not the most stable individual. Not even a little. Why Why doesn't Wilbur shoot him? And why does he gun butt him as opposed to just blowing his brains out? You can't really aim accurately when you're running, plus, a shotgun is not very accurate. Like, in real life, those things are not accurate. That is true. So, running up to him, plus I like the, um, hey, asshole. Yeah, it was really because good. Because that's a callback to I didn't Drake's first line. I didn't even expect you to do that. I just wanted to yell at Drake. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the gun butt, number one, would have dazed him as opposed to killing him. Because at that point, Wilbur just wants blood. He just yeah. wants, he wants Drake to know what he did, which he does, and feel what he did, which happens. Which definitely happens. I think he gets a little bit of everyone's pain. He gets the pan seal that Benny got in the knee. 
he gets um, the blast in the chest that Mark gets, and he gets beat up like Benny does. Even give the the emotional trauma that Matthew, Matthew gets. <laughs> yeah. Every ten minutes. <laughs> every ten minutes. <laughs> Why does Matthew just never work? His emotions are too pure. He's too pure for the beautiful cinnamon roll. Too pure for this world. It's so good. Now, in at the very end, Wilbur revealed. Well, it's not really revealed. It's just sort of he's bit. That he's bit. How does he? How this, does he? Is this the big question? How does? Is that? Does Wilbur die? That's, I mean, does Wilbur die technically in the show? He, okay, it all depends on, like, how you ask the question. Because, yes and no. Does Wilbur die within the confines of the show? Just what we see in the episodes. No. Because the last shot is Wilbur holding the bite, looking kind of sick. In the show, he does not die. But out of the show, we've implied that it's already too late for Wilbur, even though I would love to do like a Lee Everett thing and saw off the arm. <laughs> no, but we've implied that it's it's too late for Wilbur because we tried doing makeup to make him look paler and sicker. Mm. So it's not, it, there wasn't enough time for Wilbur. So he does live through the show. So if you just watch the show and that's it, Wilbur lives. But I can't see him living too long after the show. Now, the one question I think that's on everybody's mind is, why is Luna still with Drake? Uh, I want to don't judge me on this, but it's kind of like an abusive relationship. No, I know, I wrote it that way. Yeah, uh, that's the reason why. Uh, it's a psychological thing where it's like, in the beginning, probably, he was, like, great to her, and, like, when they fell in love, you know, that's how it was, that he was so great, and then it probably switched one day, and he beat down her self-esteem, and she probably thought she couldn't do better, or that, since it's the apocalypse, that he might harm her in some way, or that, because of her leaving him, he might harm other people. Okay, that's, yeah, like... Can you clear it up for everyone that you and I do not have an abusive relationship? Oh no, me and Sammy are not like that at all. <laughs> but I wanted to write my character very unlikable. I wanted him to be the villain you wanted to see die. Yes. And the best way to do that is to take everyone's favorite Samsonite crew member and treat her badly. Oh god, no, Sammy is not like that in real life. If he was, I would not be with him, and I'd probably beat him. Um, that's a furl statement. I, I have, like, a really strong will that cannot be broken. That is very true. <laughs> tough bitch, tough bitch. <laughs> no, I love you. I, okay. I would never, ever be like Drake in any way, shape, or form. Oh, I know, because I'd beat you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, Four times, by the way. Did you did you guys talk about that in your interview? How I How we had to shoot that whole scene, like, Five times, Which every scene? single time I had to destroy you oh, by yeah. slamming on the ground. Believe me, I talked about that. Yes. <sighs> How's your back, by the way? It's better now. I definitely don't like Drake. I stop. loved, loved playing Drake, but as a person, I can't stand Drake. I love, I, I yeah, I just, he's a bad person. I love to, okay. here's the thing about playing the villain. Dimitri and George played the villain in the movie. And you sort of did too. You played like the antagonist, but not really a villain. I played the anti-hero. Yeah. I am not as good playing the good guy. I'm just not. I'm much better being an asshole, I think. Because you don't need to act. Now, I have questions. Okay, because... Before the apocalypse, Drake and Luna got married. And they were happy. He wasn't a dick face? He was a... He had the... He was a douchebag, and he got into a lot of bar fights. Did he cheat on her? No. Was that, like, one of his codes? More or less. He did wow. not cheat on Luna. Did he check other girls out? Yes. He was one of those. He was one of those where, like, Luna... He could be holding Luna's hand, and he would see a waitress go by, and he would just... 
an asshole. Uh, he never touched, never kissed, never... But he bang. definitely expressed interest, but he never did. Um, you think it was just a fuck with Luna because he's a control freak and wants to keep her down? Probably. That was a very good sentence. I just said that. That was, the, that was the best you've ever spoken, ever. I'm yeah. Glad that, I'm glad the camera was rolling. For yeah. Me. Like, in what aspect? Like, to watch or to make? Both. As separate questions. To watch? I would probably say when Drake finally got his coming to. The finale, huh? Yes. So you liked yes. watching me get my ass beat? I did. It was very satisfying. Uh, Thanks, babe. <laughs> to film, however, um, I liked your fight with Dimitri. That was pretty funny. So also the finale. So the finale was just your favorite day. Well, no, uh, I liked filming. Like, you and Zach fighting was pretty good, too. Mm-hmm. Uh... Uh, at the at the table with Dimitri and George, and like with the, the scene with Kaylee too, it was pretty good. I just like filming. I know. <laughs> Anytime you're behind the camera, not only do you have a great time, but the product comes out great, and we all have a great time. So what happens to Luna in between? Because obviously, if Daisy goes back and clears the walkers, she said that she puts down everyone but Drake. So anyone who was there, Matthew, Luna, she put them down as walkers and buried them properly. So how long was Luna walking around as a zombie? Oh man, I don't know. What I would have liked to have happened would have been, I would have been the zombie that bit you. That would have been nice. That would have been justice. Uh <laughs> well, I mean, technically you got to play that role in the movie. Did I? Remember you turned at the end and tackled me. I didn't think you were a bad person in the movie. I wasn't. That's not justice, then. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. So, is there any other tidbits? Oh, uh, well, you asked me, and I diverted for a second. What, how long she would have been roaming around as a zombie. I guess however long it took Daisy to find her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Now... I don't know if she specifically said Luna or not, so if I go back and I see she didn't say Luna, is Luna still walking around right now as a walker? Well, I would like to think. Okay. So Luna's probably just roaming as a dead sack of skin. Thanks, babe. Well, so was there anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Alright. In that case, this was Luna. Get Liddy. Spooky Bay, starting her own YouTube channel. Yeah, you spooky spirits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Besides, the my... atmosphere on set, and I think my favorite two days of filming were the first and the last, which I will get the date real quick. The first day of filming was June 13th, and the last day was August 18th, so it took June. July, August, so a little over two months to film the whole show. Two months, five days. Two months, five days. 65 days. It's all, it was a lot of work. The scheduling was horrendous, and it, it changes the last minute, and we have nine people showing up somewhere, and then 12 hours before we have to change it. It doesn't go over well, which is why many of the walkers, like a, a whole bunch of aunts and uncles wanted to be walkers, but because of the, I think we, we changed the schedule, I think four or five times for the, for the finale. It was just, they couldn't make it every single time. So it was like, I can't live with that anymore. But back to the original thing, the atmosphere of, my favorite atmosphere of filming was day one and day 65. Because day one is like, here we go. We're starting the show. It's happening. We're doing it. We're going to bring these characters to life. Episode one, the feeling on set was so good. It that, was. That tent... Uh, I got for like my 10th, 8th birthday, and I had just opened it for that scene, and I'm now 22. Um, <laughs> it's still in my trunk, I don't want, it's, it doesn't fit back in the bag it came in, so I really don't want to deal with it. But, the, the, the whole thing about episode 1 was it felt great, we were starting the journey that I had written almost a year previous. It was a month or two after the movie went up, so it was July, August, September, so right about about a month from now, last year, is when I started writing the show, and, I, and then during the winter months, I, I 
wrote the whole thing out and sent it to everyone, and everyone was, like, tweaking it. Episode two. Episode... See, episode two, I liked a lot. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah was ad-libbing left and right. It was more of, you know, to get to know everybody. Um, it was, nah. like, a warm-up to the, to the characters and then introduce their first conflict, which is Daisy, which ends up not being a conflict and actually saves everyone's asses. Sort of. No, gets everyone killed. Either way. Um, the feeling on set that day was was very I was positive. Very, you I was were, anxious. You were anxious because we was, were like getting into it. We were like the reason, into the story. It's like, okay, things are starting. We, we built this first episode, zombies, and then it's like, okay, we're moving forward now. It, episode three was great. Uh, everyone, Zach wasn't there for it. And if you look, you can, now that you know, you'll probably be able to tell that Zach isn't there with us. Yeah. But we did a great job. Um, Zach did a great job with it, uh, making it. George did a great job, including Benny's presence. Uh, Jeremiah did all right with it, too. He, he roped in Benny when I didn't expect him to, and I was like, that was good. That helped. Uh, episode four, four and five, we did everything on the same day. All of four, all of five. We did it all on the same day. That was day. a good day. That was a great day. That was actually, you know what? I know episode one felt really good. Episode that day was, I think, my third favorite. One but of the, very close. Was, the, it was a great day on set, like you said. It was Jeremiah's last day. Um, wow. No, I, I'm i not saying... They don't coincide... Well, they do coincide because Jeremiah hates your guts. But, <laughs> but uh, no, um, it was Jeremiah's last day on set, episode four and five. Um, we got everything done. Uh, see, we, we blew through episode four. It was like, we did it in like an hour, uh, the first half. And then we were like, okay, now what do we do? We have like seven hours before it gets dark. So we just went in the garage, we played pool for a bit. Uh, we drove around, we got some food, we played Our World. And then we went to Thea's and we were like, okay, we got an hour. And we got everything set up and got all the cars there. And man, ep- the end of episode four with the headlights took us like 11 tries to get. But and it was once- perfect because everybody like... Everybody Everyone reacted thing. perfectly. They did because like, they kind of backed up, and it wasn't like a like headlights look. It was like yeah, it, it was, was just, it was an absolute perfect shot. It was the great. headlights, I think. I and, loved and it. Getting the cars to be where they were on camera was very difficult, but it worked. It was great. It, it was went, great. and then one of my favorite shots about the episode was well, my number one favorite is obviously the headlights coming on, but the second one is from inside Drake's car when you see the you focus see coming up, and then you little, look. And then you look back over here and you see it, and then Drake kind of fades in a little, like on the side. At night on episode five was okay. was great. Uh, a lot of bad things happened. Talk about your glasses. Yeah, a lot of bad things happened. I left my notebook of the scripts on top of Dimitri's car, and then I drove without taking them off and everything. And, and the camera went, went exploded. I'm getting there. Uh, I put my glasses and camera up there after that incident, and they fell off, and then I backed over them. The camera that is recording right now was ran over by a car. Um, so were my glasses, and if you look, I, I already went and got fitted for new ones, and they're going to be on the way, but if you look, I had to, like, really repair those. Um, it's It was it was pretty great. Oh, hang on, episode five, flipping Jeremiah was great. He that smacked was... his head really hard. He had a migraine previous. And he threw and up. I, I, and he threw up. He hit his head so hard he threw up. I thought he had a concussion, but he seemed to, he seems to be okay. Seems um, to be okay. That's some great insurance. He seems. I mean, he, uh, he texted me or sent me a picture like the day after, like, a few days after he. Uh, died as Mark, and he's, he's like shaved and got a haircut, and he was like, all traces of Mark are gone, and I haven't seen him in person since the last day of him, but we've been talking back and forth, we've been recording Far Cry and stuff. Um, episode 6 was a hard day on set because of how hot it was, and Michaela and her body and her medications don't mix with humid weather, weather at <laughs> all. So, it was a really hard day on set for us on 6, but and it was, ended up being okay because no one was, no one was attacking anyone. We were all just fried because yeah. of the weather. It just wasn't the hardest yeah. to film was easily six. Yeah, we, we because of the, the heat put us in a bad yeah. headspace, and then me and Michaela being impatient in that bad headspace didn't communicate well. And I, it's a problem anyway. I mean, we always figure it out. 
but I never understand the first time. Because he's a doofus. Because I'm a doofus. And Michaela's delivery sometimes doesn't come across the best sometimes. And mixing those two problems is like a recipe for tiny, Bigger. many tiny little disasters sprinkled over a day. And it's fine, it's fine, it's like our thing. But like, it just, it was a hard day on set until, I would say after the musical part of it, in, in the episode, oh, after yeah. the episode, I after the, the smile and then it's phased into the intro, I left and got chicken. With, and yeah. then that's when I think after that it was like, okay, it's not really all that bad anymore. It's more of... It was fun after that. It was fun after that. It was there just was some... starting it was not easy. Atmosphere on episode 7 depends on which part you're talking about because it was fil filmed on different days. Okay, talk about the boring or stuff with Dimitri and George. Uh... It was actually very quick. They blasted that out really fast. It was like 25 minutes, and we were done. And then we went to Thea's and did their other day stuff. Episode 7 was great. My mom got shot in the head. That was fun. Was oh, and uh, side note about 5, my parents weren't actually there on set. But their one shot each was put in like three days later. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Um, episode 8, Drake, uh, the, that was not a real radio, that was a pencil sharpener. Uh, basically, we just walked up and got... There was no real behind-the-scenes info on that besides, you know, there's a, a pencil sharpener. Um, dog. Episode 9. Episode 8. No, 9, the fight. Right, we haven't talked oh, about Oh, uh, if you dog. look at before, like, Drake shoots the house and then runs in and then it cuts to the other side of the door and I'm, you know, going in. In between me rushing the door and coming through the door was over a month, mm -hmm. and and my hair is exactly the same length because oh, I yeah. had it cut. Exact. It was it, it was great. Uh, and if you look very very closely, you can see I trip going up the stairs. <laughs> but that was the only thing. That was the only one of like the three or four takes we did of it that came out focused because this camera likes to unfocus. Episode nine was the fight scene, and we've already talked about that a lot. I took that, the, that so flip. Fun many times there's a lot of real punches in there the headbutt was real that stung i'm telling you it was like taking a non-lethal bullet to the head it hurt so bad yeah and then the finale was just amazing was just amazing uh i took george's fall many times uh dimitri choreographed me and his whole fight it was great i actually made myself cry for michaela's death there's just a lot of Jess did amazing as a walker, Dimitri's girlfriend, Jess, uh, amazing, uh, my aunt and uncle, and then I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get anyone else, I'm going to try, but it was great, it was just all around great experience, and I wanted to actually say here on an actual Snapdragons thing, oh, by the way, the Snapdragons represent death, I, I, I should probably clear that up because I know a lot of people aren't going to get it, which is Wow, fine. what a prank. I'm, I'm acting as Drake. No, um... No, you're not. Shush. Uh, I'm... If you look in the intro, everyone is looking at the Snapdragons. Except two people. Daisy and Wilbur. Mm -hmm. Wilbur is holding them. Everyone's holding them. Except Daisy. And everyone's looking at them except Wilbur. And, and me. I wasn't there looking at them. You, you, you looked at them for a second. Oh, or, no, no, no. No one looks at them. Everyone just holds them. George is the only one that looks at them. George and Daisy. Here it is. Everyone holds them, no one looks at them. Everyone who holds them dies. Everyone who or, uh, everyone who doesn't look at them actually dies on screen. Uh, the reason George is looking at them is because he's bit, and at the end of the show he's staring down the barrel of death, and Kaylee's not holding them because she doesn't die, but she's watching everyone die, hence looking at the snapdragons. You psychopath. It's symbolism. Um, it was just an all-around great idea, and, and this is the last thing that I really have to say is... Uh, I didn't go through it. Uh, the last thing I really gotta say is that I wrote this 10 months ago, 11 months ago, and to see everyone, you guys, bring the characters that I put on paper to life is one of the coolest things yeah. I've ever seen. I, Dimitri just sent me a uh, actual cinnamon roll, and so I just rolled with it. And uh, he brought it to life in the most perfect way. But yeah, seeing you guys bring the characters on paper to life that I just had in here, it was just so cool. And, and I can't wait for the next project.